This great country is full of towns with old cemeteries. Each headstone a reminder of a person's life story. Each story a unique insight into the town's history. But there is one headstone like no other in Australia, which can be found right here behind me. But you might want to bring one of these along with you. A sewerage works is the last place you'd expect to find a grave. But here lies Henry Dunkley, whose story is one of convict cunning, treachery, murder and ghosts. I'm on my way to Gunny in New South Wales. It was here I first came across the headstone and read the inscription, sacred to the memory of Henry Dunkley, who was cruelly murdered by his wife and servant. And I knew then this was a mystery worth investigating. How a gravestone ends up in a sewerage works is anyone's guess, but it is rumored that the site used to be the location of the old police station. Our story begins in Australia's early colonial era, where a young man by the name of Henry Dunkley arrived as a convict in Port Jackson. The year was 1819, and much of Australia was still unexplored by European settlers. Dunkley worked as a carrier, transporting goods between Sydney and the Goulburn Yass district. What was then known as the New Country. Fast forward a few years to 1837 and Henry Dunkley, newly married to Lucretia Dunkley, has just bought his first property, which he names Wagarala. Before long, Dunkley is a free man, owning property and employing servants who live with him on his farm. It was in a slab hut, not far from here, that Henry Dunkley was killed in the early hours of 14th of September, 1842. It was his servant, Martin Beach, who severed Dunkley's neck with three blows to his spine using an axe while he lay asleep in his bed. Lucretia had woken to find Beach hacking away at her husband and according to her story, she was threatened with her life unless she helped dispose of the body. The two then allegedly wrapped the body in blankets and stuffed it into a wheat bag. Beach then proceeded to carry the body down to the creek. Lucretia watched from the house as 10 minutes later, B 
each returned for a spade. Then began digging Dunkley's makeshift grave. The two then cleaned the bedroom of any trace of the crime and spent the rest of the night together. <laughs> Apparently both Martin Beach and Lucretia Dunkley were caught having a feast of bacon and eggs the morning after Henry was killed. and they spent the rest of the time drinking rum and sleeping together. You'd think that would have been a bit of a red flag for the other servants. <laughs> the Goulburn Brewery would later be the scene of their undoing when the pair were apprehended by local authorities trying to buy more rum. This was despite other tenants noticing their odd behaviour in the 10 days following Dunkley's disappearance. Henry's body was found two days after their arrest when Lucretia admitted to aiding and abetting Beach in the murder of her husband. The two were sent to Berrima Jail, where they awaited sentencing. It wasn't until a year later that the trial of Beach and Dunkley took place at the Berrima Courthouse. Although the evidence was largely circumstantial, the jury handed down a sentence of guilty for both parties. A decision that was no doubt informed by Lucretia and Martin's strange behaviour leading up to and following the murder of their landlord. It was here in this courtroom that the judge, Sir James Dowling, sentenced them both to death by hanging. He gave a passionate speech which was particularly harsh on Lucretia as both the victim's wife and the murderer's co-conspirator. He even went so far as to align her with the devil. Your demeanor, even in this closing stage of the proceedings, leaves no room to doubt that you are still possessed by the same diabolical spirit. Some, and but a short time, will yet be afforded you in the gloom of solitude and with the help of ghostly admonition to allay, if possible, the storm of furious passions which still enthralls your soul. On the morning of 16 October 1843, Martin Beach and Lucretia Dunkley were hanged at a public execution. Although there is little reporting on this event, quite unusual for the time, it's speculated by some this is because when hanged, Lucretia expelled a fetus, resulting in great embarrassment for the authorities. Supposedly, the judge ordered their bodies be buried standing up, right here in the walls of this jail, so they could never rest in peace. The judge also ordered that their skulls be removed from their bodies so they could be studied. More about that later. First, I want to see if there's any merit to these local ghost stories. <laughs> Rumours abound that Lucretia Dunkley's spirit and others wander the corridors of this courthouse. Tonight, I've called in the professionals and we're going to find out firsthand.
Welcome, Pete. Thanks for coming along. Um, I run the ghost hunts here with my crew. Happy ghost hunts and tours. Welcome to Berrimah. Thank you. Graham Lewis, engineer. Thank you for having me. Pleasure, pleasure. And Chelsea, paranormal sensitive, is that right? Yes, thanks so much for having me here. Thanks. Welcome. I think we should go inside. Currently a museum, the courthouse has had a long colonial history of trialling convicts from the new country. Since then, it's had several uses, including holding town meetings, dances, concerts, and weddings. Say when? Go for it. It was also briefly an internment camp during World War I for German nationalities. Aside from the infamous Dunkley case, the courthouse has seen several other criminals and innocent people convicted. G'day Graham. G'day Tim. Thanks for coming along tonight. My pleasure. What have you got here? What have you set up? Okay, this is basically an Xbox camera, the old Xbox camera. Yeah, yep. And we've got a 21st century slant in it. What it does, it puts out a grid of laser and using software, we reconstruct it onto a laptop. So any images yep. come up as stick figures, like a human, human figure will come up as a stick figure. It'll reconstruct it down here, so if anything moves or goes bump in the night here, we'll capture it. Well, that's good, because I want to capture it. Shall we? Let's. Our teams disperse throughout the courthouse, unsure of what, or even who, we might find. One notorious criminal who may still haunt the holding rooms is John Lynch, possibly Australia's worst ever serial killer. He murdered 10 people, including a family of four. He was hanged just a year before Lucretia Dunkley and Martin Beach. But you know what? I kind of hope we don't come across him tonight. As the night comes to a close, it seems as if the spirits of Berrimah Courthouse are at rest for the evening. Or so we thought, until Graham's innovative Xbox technology began scanning an anomaly in Lucretia's former holding cell. Hello, we've got something. We're calibrating on something. What? The cell. It's, cal it's calibrating, it's got a hit. It's trying to calibrate on something. For this corner? Yeah, you're right on it. You're right on it now. Yeah? Yeah. Whoa. Did you hear that noise? No, I didn't. Did you get Come a, on. Did you get a... I got a growl? You got a growl? I got a... Tim. Can anyone else hear that growl? I didn't hear it. I didn't hear Everyone it. Everyone quiet. Definitely reaching out to you, Tim. Where? Right in front of you. Should I go in there? I'll try it. I've got a... It's, it's calibrated on you, Tim. I can see you fine. There's a figure. Nothing's latched to you at all. There's something in front. What do you mean by there's something in front of me? Tell me what tell me more. Uh, 
See, so it goes in and out. Okay, I'm getting out of here. What a night. I can only hope that the ghosts can get some shut eye now that we're not disturbing them. Because I know I need some. But before I close the lid on this case completely, a lingering question remains. Just what became of the skulls of our devious killers? Phrenology, aka examination of the skull to determine one's character. A common practice in the time of Dunkley. Perhaps this has something to do with the restless souls pervading the Berrima courthouse. We may never know. Well, viewers, I hope you've learned as much as I have on this adventure. I certainly won't be complaining next time someone forgets about me. At least I haven't been abandoned in a sewage plant for over a hundred years. I'm Tim the Yowie Man, and as always, thanks for watching.